Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, Victor. First thing, man, of course, I got to ask you about the ride. Update on that. Well, a lot. Um, It was ready and then I had it fired up. And then right as it was, you know, like we were going to get ready to drive it and start using it uh, pretty well. The oil pressure was really low. Now, I had read online that generally Oldsmobiles have pretty low oil pressure compared to other ones, but this was really low to the point where we had to start running more fuel to it. So that was really weird. So we unfortunately had to break the entire engine down, redo the whole thing, and there was nothing wrong with the engine. So as soon as we, we we put the engine together again now we got to run different tests however uh once we were ready to run all those tests this fight came up so i was like all right well the ride's got to wait until uh until after the fight that way i can really dive into it again however uh the new engine i mean the the rebuilt same engine is ready to get put in again the I got a new trans uh not yeah I got a new transmission that's gonna go in it also and a new suspension that's gonna go in it so still waiting you know it feels like I'm looking I mean I, here's the thing though the car is here it's ready to go like all it needs is installs and then we're ready to go supposedly so you know it's it's messed up because every every old guy that I talk to they always say the same thing that it's like yeah right when you think you're ready it's not really ready, you know, and then it's all the little things that you have to do that, that really bother you. And it's, that's the, that's the part I'm at right now. All right. Wow, man. Every old guy that, t- that tells you. Yeah. They're all, they all say the same thing. Oh, don't worry, brother. As soon as, as soon as it's ready to go, it's going to be something else and you're going to get pissed off. And it's like, okay, I believe it. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, uh, that's classic about every old guy. Um, let's, uh, let's jump back to last year, man. You, you start off the year. You got the win over Tony Gravely, and then you entered that Javid Basharat fight. We saw what happened, Mm -hmm. man. There was a lot of confusion, you know what I mean? Like, just going through all of that, you know, and and the backlash, so to say. What's your thoughts on everything, man? Well, obviously, I was happy I got the win uh, over Tony Gravely. Um, You know, of course, you know, celebrating after that and, you know, getting ready to get back into it. And of course, UFC calls me up and they say, hey, we want you to fight this undefeated kid. I said, sure, let's go. Let's go do this. It wouldn't be the first time I fought somebody who was undefeated. Uh, I think Basharat was, is, a, is a great fighter. You know, he's, uh, he's obviously his record, you know, stands to tell. Um, prep, preparations for that fight went well. You know, I was training a lot with Bruno Sousa, who is a UFC vet also and karate combat you know, vet, and I felt like he can imitate Basharat's style really well. So, I mean, it was a long camp, but it was a good camp. You know, I even went out, I even had enough money to uh, to go out to Abu Dhabi a little early so I can get acclimated a little bit to the time, to the weather, and, you know, and here's the thing. I mean, we're going to areas where... <laughs> I would say I wouldn't say his, yeah, but like his, his, where his fandom would be, you know. But that wasn't even the, that wasn't even an entire problem. It's just, hey, I, I'm used to it, you know. When I started fighting going in, in Japan, it was the same thing. Somebody else's territory. When I fought in Russia, somebody else's territory. This is just another, another person who's probably got home field advantage. Not that he's from there, but it's a lot of his fan base is there. Cool, whatever. Um, you know. Preparations went well. Weight cut went as good as a weight cut could go. Um, we got the weight off, and you know, here comes the fight. Round one, fairly, fairly equal, minus that one takedown that I ended up getting right back up anyway. So there was really nothing done from that, from that takedown. Okay, two judges gave it to him. One judge gave it to me. It was set up to be a good fight. You know, it, it was going until I got kicked in the balls. You know, um, I wear a classic tie cut. You know, and the the thing is that people were, people were, um, people were thinking that it was just the impact that did all the all the damage. However, for the people that actually saw the fight, because a lot of people they just see the 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 one kick and they think, ah, oh, you know, Victor's faking it, whatever. I 
I've built a career on this. Why am I going to get, I've, I've lost before I've won before. So it's like, okay, well, people are going to have their own opinion, whatever. The problem was this, since I wear a tie cut, add that thing nice and tight. In the very first round, if you watch the fight again, you'll notice that a couple kicks, they land on my body, but as he's coming, as he's retracting his kick, he slides off my cup. So I reach down and I fix my cup a couple times. And you'll see it. If you, I'm pretty sure you're going to rewatch the fight after this. I, you know, I fixed my cup a couple times. Not that he went to go kick me in the balls, but on the way down, he slides past my cup. You fix it, whatever. Um, you know, and then of course going into the corner, listening to your corner, you know, I'm kind of fixing it. But when I sat down, a piece of my dick and some of my ball actually slid out from in between my leg and my cup now of course i'm wearing some of the layering goes you know of course my naked ass body my underwear and then the tie cup so as i sit down creates a little space some dick and ball kind of go slide out from in between so now i got leg dick and ball underwear and then tie cup that's those are the layers right so when he cracked me with that little inside low kick what ended up happening is that everything got pinched between my cup and my leg that's why I said to the doctor, it was all dick and balls, because that's the entire feeling sensation I felt was the thud of the kick, but also the pinch of everything. So it wasn't necessarily just the impact that sucked. It was the fact that I got, it was a pinch on everything. And, you know, of course, I'm riling in the corner and, you know, got my face first in the mat and everything. And then, you know, the hospital trip, that was a, that was a, I felt like they took the bumpiest road in order to get to the hospital. And of course they got me in the back and they got Josh in the back. And uh well even before that there's a backstage doctor. I mean there are the, I mean apparently the uh the cage side doctor got a bunch of shit that whole night too for calling that Johnny Walker fight weird, you know. <laughs> Where are you? The desert. Oh, it's not good enough. Well, hmm. you know I, I even have some commission friends that are that are here in California that use my fight and the Johnny Walker fight as a, as they use it as training videos against uh, you know what the commission did what the uh, doctor did wrong what the referees did wrong so it was unfortunately I'm I'm being used as a as a as a uh, learning piece now but anyways I'm in the back with the with the uh, with the uh, with the backstage doctor. And they were like, oh, well, you got to take off your cup. And I was like, yes, please let's get this fucking thing off me because I feel like my balls are about to explode. And sure enough, I take it off. And the doctor and my and, and Josh Barnett, my coach, are looking at my nuts and going, yeah, those things are swollen. And I was like, yeah, I know. You know <laughs> that's when Josh put that tweet out there. He's got Satsuma for balls, Satsuma oranges. Anyways, on the way to the, uh, all, all the, way to the, uh, to the hospital, the ambulance takes the bumpiest road. And I'm like, uh. This entire time I got ice on my balls. Um, finally get to the hospital, wait at we're there a couple hours. Um, the entire time ice on my nuts, ice on my nuts, and they eventually let me get let me go. And I didn't get home to I mean, I didn't get back to the hotel till about two, three in the morning. You good? I I just kind of cut up. But um, yeah, I didn't get back to the hotel till about two, three in the morning. I couldn't sleep that night because, well. It's not easy to sleep with ice cold, well, ice on your balls. The you know, so it's you know that was that was a horrible, horrible night. And then, only to end up having to go to the the airport the very next day, late the next day. But you know, I'm kind of limping around, and you know, um, I'm at the airport, and it's very busy, very very busy, and it was nowhere. I mean, I can tell it was busy because of the fights. You know the uh, the uh, the people, the United Arab, Arab you know, Emirates, the United Arab Emirates people, they they really they gather for their for these events. You know, they're it's really popular out there. You know, there's a lot of people at the airport to the point where people are like kind of looking at me and looking at their phones and wondering, hey, is that the guy? That's the guy. And that's what ended up happening. I'm in the I'm in the, I'm in line to get into the uh, into my airport to the to fly. And sure enough, I got these two guys in front of me and. You know they're they're probably Paki- you know Pakistani London born Pakistani guys going for Basharat and you know they're kind of looking at me and they're looking you know they're kind of looking at their phone and kind of hey hey that's the guy that's the guy and 
you know, I'm pretty sure everybody knows, but for every UFC event, you sign the posters and they give you a free one. Well, I don't want these. I mean, I don't really want these things because they, I mean, I'm going to get a lot of them and, you know, I don't hold too much sentimental value with them. So I give them away. So I reached across and I said, hey, guys, did you guys come for the fight? They were like, yeah, hey, man, tough luck. You know, like, I'm sorry about that. Mind you, I've seen all the the negative comments on me on my Instagram at this point, and they're all still up on my Instagram because I think they're I think they're pretty funny. The, how angry people the, how these these guys got, you know, and I get it. They they rally for their people. You know, I've never had that, but you know, I've never had anybody just vote uh, want to go for me just because I'm white or just because I'm American. You know. So it's a very, it's still very strange when people, when people do that, like the way the Irish got behind Conor McGregor and the way, you know, certain people get behind certain people just because of one thing they have in common, right? Which, okay, cool, whatever. But anyways, so I hand my poster over to them. In my head, I'm thinking they can hate me. They can even comment on my, on my, on my Instagram saying how much of a coward they think I am. However, these two people, these two guys, they can hate me from afar, but they all they also know they also know that I'm good, that I'm actually a nice person. They say, oh, okay, they're gonna have their they're gonna have that poster that's up there. They may even cross my face out and my signature, but they'll have Basharat's signature because I'm a nice guy. So whatever, right? So all in all, you know, the experience was I would say about as expected, you know, when you're a, when you're a person in a in a in a public light going against somebody who is you know, well liked within a certain community, and when they don't get exactly what to the to the T exactly what they want, they're gonna react a certain way. Cool, whatever. And then eventually, what it dies down and people forget. Actually, people don't forget. People are gonna. I'm pretty sure people are gonna be talking about my my cock and balls for a very long time for the wrong reasons. What the hell? Yeah. Hey, some of the articles <laughs> that they put out, like <laughs> the titles on the articles. They're kind of funny, man, to be honest. Oh yeah, they are kind of funny. And and here's the thing. I I figured that this is an this is a good opportunity to make a shirt. So I'm I was working with some guy in order to get uh in order to put out a couple of shirts about all dick and balls. It's a picture of me obviously wailing in pain. But I think it'd be a funny shirt, all dick and balls, Victor Henry, you know. And what sucks too, <laughs> I get home and Sure enough, I hear about the the Russian girl who fought with staff. Did you hear about that? So she fought Jin Yu Frey right before me, or two fights before me. Um, of course, they went the three rounds and you know they were they had a competitive fight. The Russian girl ended up winning. I get home and I start feeling a little itch on my chest. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And sure enough, I end up getting a little staph infection on my chest. Yeah. So I caught staff from a dirty mat because I went face first into it because I got kicked in the balls. But luckily I recognized it real quick, got some hippie cleanse on it. And, you know, you know, being in these combat sports, you know, where you're, it's body on body contact a lot. You're not, you're, you're, you're like likely to get a staph infection, skin, you know, some sort of skin, skin ick, you know, ringworm, whatever. But yeah, I ended up getting home. Kicked in the balls, swollen nuts, and now I got a small staph infection on my chest. But I'm not gonna let that thing get to Kevin Randleman stage where you know it, you know you gotta do something like that. Nah, I recognize it real quick. Take my antibiotics and rub whatever ointments and proper wash and get on top of that real quick. You know what's another good uh, t-shirt idea would be you know from South Park, the guy that has his balls in the wheelbarrow. And then you could just put your face. Ah, in yeah, stands down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought about that too. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, a good one. that's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that you're, you know, because it's, you know, like like you said, there was a lot of hate, man, like serious hate for something that was out of your control, and uh, you're taking it, you know, with a grain of salt. I think it's because you have so much experience in this game, right? If you were like, let's say, nine and two, or maybe even seven and one, or something like that, it'd probably be a different, different a reaction from certain fighters. Yeah, probably, maybe, but also I I understand the situation that, you know, the very specific situation I was in. You know, you have a a young up-and-coming fighter in Basharat who was undefeated, um, who's who's Muslim, who's, you know, you know, 
born in Pakistan, raised in London, now fighting in out of out of uh, well, now fighting in um, out of the United States, training in Vegas. Right? He's had a, he's had a he's had a pretty he's had a I don't know if he was London born or if he was born in Pakistan or I don't know that much of his family life, but you know, there's there's connection with him, especially if you are. If you are a young Muslim fan of MMA, you know, you have the the Nur Magomedovs, and now you have this young guy in Basharat coming up, so you want to identify with him. Yeah, I get that. I get I 100% get that. So when it like I say, when it doesn't go exactly your way, you get up in arms about it. But what people forget oftentimes is the only thing you have in common with this person is a religion. And it's sad to say, but guys like me who are not Muslim have more in common with this person because we train day in and day out for a for a fight that we are going to compete against each other with but we share the same lifestyle other than just religion you know there's a lot of people out there that you know they have their religion but they don't they don't practice the religion to the uh maybe you know they to the exact way or whatever maybe they fall short according to what their religion is or whatever, but then they have things in common with people that are, you know, uh, that are, that are your, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your ne'er-do-wells of the world, you know? Um, there's a show called, uh, Righteous Gemstones on, uh, I forget what it's on right now, but it basically goes uh, over, it's got Danny McBride and it. it's a comedy, but these guys are preachers and, they got drug problems and they're over here, you know, with, with hookers and everything. And it's like, well, he has more in common with the person that, you know, does a bunch of drugs and does all that hooker stuff than, than the so-called, you know, or religious people, you know, and this is just, and of course that's just a show, but that only goes, uh, that only goes to show that what people in life, they gravitate to that one thing and they think that they have something in common with that one person when in reality, they probably have something more in common with the complete opposite. I think me and Basharat share uh, share a lot more in common in in the decisions we make in not doing drugs or alcohol. And I don't think you know I don't think that's necessarily just because of his Muslim religion. I think it's because Muslim religion for sure, but also because he's training to be the best he could be. You know, and that's what he wants to do. That's exactly the same thing I want to do. You know, and training and fighting and and committing your your body to a to a to a sport that only lasts until whoever whoever knows how long it lasts so i mean i think me and him have a lot in common other than just just the one religion thing and oh i'm i'm you know i just happen to be a young muslim kid that want to do this and i live in london therefore i'm gonna go for him and i'm gonna hate somebody else it's weird but you know i guess that's the only things that you learn in life after living life yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, let's switch gears to your upcoming fight, man. Um, Ronnie or Hani Yaya, man, he is a veteran. Like he's the definition of a veteran. Been around for a long time. What are your thoughts on him and, and this matchup coming up? You know, uh, so I don't have personal experience with him. However, my coach does, and my, I should say my coach is. You know, uh, Josh Barnett has rolled with him because he trained at CSW for a little bit. Chad George has rolled with him because he trained with Chad a little bit. And they both say the same thing. He is gorilla strong. You know, so in these positions, expect that he is going to lay here and he's not going to rush position. And he's a, was he a fifth degree black belt in jujitsu? And he's not going to rush any position. He's going to be in these positions and let you feel the strength and the pressure. He'll stay here and, and just win off a of position. So, be ready for that. Um, so I've been, of course, working my counter wrestling, my anti grappling, my, you know, of course, my jujitsu. You know, tomorrow I'm gonna go train with uh, Cobrinas, you know, Charles uh, Cobrinia and his son Kennedy. So I'm I'm doing what I can, what's for with what's available to me to really train against that super high level grappling. Um, but of course, you know, it seems to me like these little Brazilians are the ones that are. Or uh, as my kryptonite because I lost against uh, Javier Sunsau. So, you know, I keep, you know, I I try to keep my head on a swivel. I try to stay as humble as possible, but at the same time, you can't be too humble when you're trying to knock somebody's lights out. For sure, man. And you know, what I mean, like you have a lot of submissions on your on your record as well. So, 
You know, they, you never know what happens in a fight, though, once you get punched. Yeah, once I mean, I mean, my coach Josh Barnett said it best. You know, the the jujitsu game in MMA has really taken a a back step because of how athletic these uh, fighters have become. Usually, it's a kickboxing fight. Somebody gets hit with a right hand. They're a little dazed, and all of a sudden, it's rear naked strangle. You know, time. So, you know, um, I think that the jujitsu for sure is a is a is is a skill to have in in MMA, of course. But I think that if he if if Hani Yaya is too flat footed and not able to ward off my striking or not get his grappling going, then it's going to be a, it's going to be a long night for him. Have you? When's the last opponent where you had a camp where it was like mostly grappling focus? What when was the last time you've done that? Uh, b- 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 Tony Gravely. You know, we I, I kind of figured that he would try to just wrestle me a lot. So, you know, generally a lot of my fight camps have been anti wrestling. You know, uh, try to try to just ward off the takedowns. Once I get my once I get my rhythm and my striking going, it's pretty tough to keep up with me. You know, because of I wouldn't even say cardio because I do get tired. But it's just that once I have that rhythm in my head, then I'm able to go. You know, um. I know somebody commented the uh, for one of my fights that uh, they don't need to test me for anything but fucking battery acid because it seems I got a, a, a you know a energy like a hell like a motherfucker. But you know, every pretty much every camp, I work my wrestling to its utmost degree because the last thing I want to be is a, a striker that can that can't get off his back. And I think that my uh, that my wrestling and my anti wrestling has been only elevating in the past, you know, in the past couple of years. I mean, anybody who's any, you know, it's all, it's, it sucks. Cause I always tell my coaches, I feel like I can never fight the first couple takedowns. It always feels like I always get taken down. And from there, I'm able to start fighting them. You know, uh, even against when I fought, uh, my UFC, de- UFC debut, he took me down and I was able to get back up. But luckily for me, that was, you know, we kept, we kept duking it out, but even Tony gravely, he got me down, but I was able to work back up. Every time in my in my UFC fights that I've been taken down, I've been able to work back up. So it's it's been improving, and I hope that I don't even have to prove that this fight because that means it's gotten farther than I would like it have gone. It just shows you that you're always still developing, right? Still working on on your craft uh, as you go. You know what I mean? Especially with that anti wrestling stuff. Yeah, man. I mean, it sucks getting old, but you know what sucks even more? Losing. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. Um, Yeah, man, Uh, this fight, man, it's 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 interesting. I don't know if it's going to be like this, you know, like what we expected from the Basharat fight or even what we expected from the Barcelos fight, but it's going to be very interesting. And uh, it's a test, man. Is, is that, you know, everything's a test, but, you know, the ground game, that's what's going to be the test, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if it gets there, it's going to be like, oh, can you ward off a fifth degree black belt in jujitsu, or can you catch your own? I mean, if if uh, if I get into a sweet position and I start getting my own strikes going on, then why not? Why not be there? It's not like I got to completely avoid any sur- sort of grappling exchange. If I'm in a good position, then why the hell not? You're looking to go in there and just blast his face. That's pretty much uh, that's the way I look. I at mean, it, right? listen, every fighter. Yeah thinks the same thing even the even damian maya even khabibs even the khabibs of the world they excel in the grappling area however if they can just go out there and hit you with one right hand and it's over why not they all want the same thing why do all this double leg takedown and work your way to the back and then choke somebody or double leg takedown take an ankle Mm -mm. takes way too long george miles vidal went out there flying knee somebody and made millions of dollars. Yeah. You know, John Fitch went out there and took people down and grinded them out and won. Not a lot of people remember that, yeah. but everybody's going to remember that George Mas- Masvidal just jumped knee to the face. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to go back on the the takedown thing and, and the scoring system. You know what I mean? I think there's a, there's a, a argument there because it seems like, you know, if a like round's close, one guy gets like a, a takedown, but it doesn't really do nothing with the takedown. The other guy even gets up like within, let's say, two, three seconds. 
and it seems like everybody's like, oh, he won the round because of the takedown. Do you think that's fair? No, not at all. I mean, if I mean there, I, there is an argument to say that there is a pressing action, kind of, but I think I think fights need to be scored as a totality rather than by the round because. You know, these five minute rounds have been gamed. You know, you know, oh, as long as I win three minutes of this two minute round, I mean, of this five minute round, then it's it's my round or kickbox, kickbox, kickbox. And all of a sudden, oh, blast double at the end of the at the last 10 seconds. Yeah. Oh, you win the round. And like, it's not really fighting. That's that's gaming. That's playing a game. And, you know, if 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 we're going to do that kind of stuff, then we got to go back to the 10 minute rounds with knee stomps on the head and, you know, all that stuff, you know, um, taking somebody down, I can see as it's, of course it has its advantages because you put it into a, you put it into an area where you have control. You took somebody down and now you are either on top of them or whatever, and you're delivering damage. It can't be, you can't just judge somebody, somebody, something on the potential for damage. You have to, you have to judge them on the actual output of damage. Um, I could make the same argument if I took somebody down and I did absolutely nothing with it. That's just as good as somebody like John Jones just having a exorbitant reach over somebody. He has the potential to throw all these crosses, but he doesn't really throw that many punches. It's like, what? So now he's just, he's winning because he has the potential to do it. That doesn't make any sense. So, um, Definitely, the uh, the 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 fight needs to be scored as a totality, not just uh, not just round by round. Yeah, I completely agree, man. I would love to see the first uh, ten minute first rounds. That would be great with stomps and all that. Like, I mean, they did it. What well, they did, they did it in Pride. I mean, it was a ten minute round with a two minute break, and then a five minute round. Yeah. I mean, that's still a fifteen minute fight. Why not? It would give the uh, it would give the grappler a lot more time to work. You know. Uh, to really tire somebody out, fatigue somebody, and I mean, if they allow knees to the head on the on a grounded opponent, it would actually play in the favor of strikers, you know. Yeah. So, preaching. Let's go back to that. Preaching to the choir, man. April twenty seventh, yeah. UFC Fight Night, Las Vegas. Victor, always good catching up with you, man, and all the best with the repair, getting that car restored to a perfect condition, and of course the fight, man. Go do your thing. I appreciate. Your I appreciate team. that, man. Yeah, you. I won't be looking like uh, Robin Williams and Jumanji by that time. But geez, you know what year? Is, uh, it looks. Uh, I've been. I've been growing this thing out, not because I've been wanting to, but because I'm lazy. I'm like, ah, you know what? Yeah. I could either go to the barber and do some about it, or I could just stay home and take a nap. I think I'm gonna do that. All so. Right. All right, man. Hey, the Kenny G one was good too. I, I ain't gonna lie. Oh, combat Kenny G. Yeah, combat Kenny G. That was that was legit. Now I think uh, maybe maybe my my next my next one is gonna be all cock and balls, Victor or something. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It'd be it'd be interesting to see uh, what's his name, Bruce Buffer, announce that. Oh yeah, yeah. That <laughs> that'd be fun. That would be a fun one. Yeah.